Hello everyone, don't know why the camera's shaking like that, but uh, I'm bringing you another deck profile for the first time in a long, long time. This deck profile is on my favorite deck. I've done a profile of it before on my channel, back when Graf and Seer were hit on the ban list. And that deck is Burning Abyss. This is a full power Burning Abyss list. So Tour Guide, Graf, Seer, Beatrice, all of them at three, all of the power cards at three. This isn't the most optimal Burning Abyss build. It's not Phantom Knights. It doesn't have the Speedroid engine. This is just pure, full power, Burning Abyss. Just pure BA, my favorite way to play the deck. Um, yes, I know the Speedroid engine and the Phantom Knight engine is really, really good. PK Fire is so strong. Konami has hit this deck on the ban list three times, and PK Fire is still like getting really good results. So yes, I know this isn't the most optimal way to play the deck, but it's just the way I want to play it. So before I get any comments saying, where's Terran Tap? That's, that's why. I just prefer to play pure BA. And I also don't have the money for Terra Top right now, so... Yeah, anyway, let's just get right into the monsters. For the non-Burning Abyss monsters, we play, of course, the three tour guide. This is just a staple in every full power Burning Abyss list. You don't really need the three, but you play the three to see it in your first hand, as like your opening hand, as much as possible. And uh, on the end phase of your turn, you usually want to search this out with Skarm, because she is a one-card combo. She's a free Dante. She's just a really great card. And this was the first card that they hit when they tried to hit Burning Abyss on the ban list. They limited Tour Guide to one. It didn't really matter because Skarm could still search her. And then we play the three Fiendish Rhino Warrior. This card is basically a Burning Abyss monster in everything but name, and he's not a Dark, he's an Earth. Fiendish Rhino Warrior is just incredible. When he goes to the graveyard, he sends any Fiend monster in your deck to the grave, so he's like a Foolish Burial when you mill him. And then when he's on the field, he protects your cards from being destroyed. Well, your monsters, not all of your cards, from being destroyed by battle or card effects. So he helps keep your dudes on the field when Beatrice is on so they don't get blown up by Beatrice. Or he just gets around Raigeki and all kinds of stuff. He's great. And then that's it for the non-Burning Abyss monsters. For the Burning Abyss lineup, ugh, I play three Graf because he's Graf. He's part of the infamous Trinity. Three Graf, three Seer, and three Skarm. Let me see if you, let me, you can see. Yeah, you can see that fine. Three Graf, three Seer, three Skarm. This is Burning Abyss right here. Uh, Graf, when he goes to the grave, he special summons from the deck. Seer, when he goes to the grave, he special summons from the grave. And Skarm, when she goes to the grave, uh, on the end phase of that turn, you can search a fiend monster from your deck. So these three are just really powerful cards. They help the deck just float, and they help the deck combo really hard, and you pretty much have to play. If you're going to play Full Power Burning Abyss, this was just a staple. You never deviated from the three of each. And then another three of Burning Abyss that I play that wasn't too common back in Full Power Burning Abyss time was three Farfa. I love Farfa. Farfa's really, really good. Um, he gets around boss monsters, things that are too big for you to attack over. He gets around all kinds of stuff. And I've been doing cross bandless duels with my Dragon Ruler deck, and Farfa really fucks up Draco Sack because uh, Draco Sack can't be destroyed when there's tokens on the field, so Farfa can banish the Draco Sack, making him lose his exceed materials, and then you can pop the tokens or attack the tokens, and then he comes, and then the Draco Sack comes back, and he is useless. Unless they make another Draco Sack. He's just a really, really good card. Gets around a lot of things. Um, if you use it on an Exceed boss monster, it'll make them detach their materials when they get banished. And most Exceeds are useless when they don't have any materials. So that's it for the three of Burning Abyss monsters. And then for the rest of the monsters, play two Rubik. Because Virgil is really cool. Um, I only play one Virgil, but I still play two Rubik because I want to see Virgil at least every now and then. And then for the one of Burning Abysses, Bis I, whatever, I play one Barbar because burn damage is nice. One Libic because he special summons from the hand, and he's mainly just another name in here to get Dante out. And then one Proxied Alec. Uh, she's still coming in the mail. I don't know why the order is taking so long to get here. Anyway, Alec's really cool. You can use her with Beatrice to make her into an effect veiler, basically. Uh, she just has some really cool versatile plays. Before, 
Beatrice was a thing. This card was trash. Um, but now she's actually decent for once. So I can't remember how many monsters that is, but it's a lot. As a most Burning Abyss builds. And then for the spells, I play just two Dark Hole, one Foolish Burial. Dark Hole because blowing up things is nice. And it doesn't really matter if you blow up your own monsters in BA because they float. And then Foolish Burial because, duh, it's a staple in every deck that uses the graveyard. And for the traps, I like to play trap heavy BA. I know that's like, it used to be the good thing, but it's not that great anymore. But I still like trap heavy BA. I play three Traveler and two Fire Lake. I know three Traveler, not a lot of people like Traveler or Fire Lake anymore. Uh, I really love Traveler's effect, being able to pop stuff with Fire Lake or Horn of Heaven. And then on the end phase, or before they attack you to protect yourself from an OTK. You just special summon all your Burning Abyss monsters back onto the field. Uh, this card is just nutty. And I know it's not great against every deck. It's a very easy card to side out, but I really like Traveler's Effect. So I run it at 3 to try and optimize and maximize the chance that I see it on my opening hand. And then for the rest of the traps, I play 3 Poor Man Solemn Strike. Uh, Horn of Heaven is basically a Solemn Strike. But instead of paying life points, you tribute a monster and then do a Solemn Strike. And the reason it's good in this deck is because we have Traveler, and most of our shit floats anyway, so if it goes to the graveyard from a tribute off of Horn of Heaven, we're going to get some stuff done with it. And I think this card just works really well in this deck. And if you don't have the money to spend on Solemn Strike, it's just it's a really great alternative, especially in Burning Abyss. And then two Phoenix Wing Wind Blast and one Regeki Break. I would play a third Wing Blast if I had it, but I don't, so I play Regeki Break. Um... Wing Blast is really great. Uh, you can discard, get a graveyard effect from the monster you discard, and then put a card from your opponent's field onto the top of their deck. If you use it on... Uh, this card destroys rogue decks by using it on their normal summon. Usually always sets them back a turn and gets you... It, it just... It, it's really good. Like, like And like really good against rogue decks. I don't know why I'm stuttering so much. I'm just... I cannot stress how great this card is. Uh, Regeki Break is like a shitty Wing Blast. Instead of sending it to the top of the deck, it just pops it. So, not as great. Like I said, I'd run a third Wing Blast if I had it, but I don't. And yes, I know online ordering is a thing. I just don't want to... I think Wing Blast is like two bucks. I don't want to spend that much for a card I don't absolutely need. Then for the one of staple traps, I play Vanity's Bottomless and Torrential because, duh, they're great. And then, of course, that is 40 cards for the main... I never play anything more than 40 because I like consistency. Uh, I would be playing three upstarts if Konami wasn't an asshole and didn't limit upstart goblin. Oh well. Then for the monsters, uh, the extra deck. Then for the monsters, we huh? get these centered more. I hope they've been centered throughout the video. I only look up every now and then, so I can't tell if they're always centered. Anyway, three Dante, duh. This is why the deck is good and able to do anything. If Konami really wants to kill off Burning Abyss, they're going to have to limit or just straight up ban Dante. I don't think they would ever ban Dante because more decks use it than just Burning Abyss. But yeah, if they want Burning Abyss to stop being a thing, they need to limit this card or Burning Abyss is always going to be relevant. And then 3 Beatrice. This card is absolutely disgusting. This is so good. Uh, a walking foolish burial that you can use during either player's turn and when she dies, she special summons a Burning Abyss extra deck monster. She is just so good. She... Uh, I can't, she, uh, why did Konami make this card after they already hit Burning Abyss? I don't get it. Did they want them to be relevant again? Because she definitely made them relevant again. They had to limit Beatrice and then limit Seer. And like I said, Burning Abyss is still a thing. It's still relevant. It just shows how powerful the deck is. They've hit it three times. Maybe even four? But I'm pretty sure it's three and they still do stuff. And then two, Purple Dante. This is the main target that you want to get off of Beatrice. Um, he is... Card advantage, the card. You, uh, during either player's turn, you can discard a card and then uh, discard a Burning Abyss monster and draw one card. So you can discard a card, get an effect, special summon with something, do anything, and then draw a card. And then whenever he's sent to the graveyard, you make your opponent discard a card. And he's a 2800 beater, so he helps get over a lot of stuff. And then for the last of the Burning Abyss... Okay, let's, yeah, let, let's shuffle. Let's go, guys. The last Burning Abyss extra deck monster is one Virgil because I really like Virgil. I really like his artwork. I think Secret Rares are real purdy. Uh, I think the fact that there's a Burning Abyss Synchro is really cool. 
Also, fun fact, there's a Burning Abyss Synchro, Fusion, and two Exceeds. Isn't that awesome? She's technically not a Burning Abyss Exceed, but he is, so still counts. Uh, and yeah, I know a lot of people are opting not to run Virgil anymore, but I just love Virgil, so I keep him in. I used to run two, but now I only run one, because you don't you, you don't need two. And for the extra dot monsters that aren't Burning Abyss, two Downer Magician, make your useless Dantes useful again. Uh... If your opponent disc um, uses a wing blast or a Medulce TR Masu or whatever, you can still get your effect because Dante becomes an exceed material instead of just being the monster. So, yeah, she's really good for making sure that you get your Dante's uh, add back to hand effect off. One F Zero Utopic Future. This guy is absolutely nutty. He's great. He steals games, gets around a lot of stuff that you normally wouldn't be able to get around, and he's just. A fantastic card to have. I'm, I'm considering running two, but I've never really needed a second one. I just like him so much that I've been considering running two. One Giga Brilliant. Help make your Dante's big enough to get over certain things and help OTK. One Nightmare Shark. Make him with a Bar Bar. Detach the Bar Bar. Deal 900 damage and swing in for 2,000 direct. Steals games when you normally wouldn't have games. And then the last is one Acid Golem because we need to run it. The Double Dante Acid Golem OTK is definitely a thing. Uh, he's a 3,000 beat stick, so he's the biggest monster in the deck. Helps get around a lot of stuff. His side effects are really bad. When he's on board, you can't special summon, and when he has no exceed materials, he cannot attack. So you pretty much only want to use him whenever you're going to be going for game, and you know that you have game. All right. Now, I guess I'll do some test hands or whatever, uh, and just... I'll do a test hand, just because. Why not? You can go ahead and leave the video if you want. There's no reason to watch the test hand. It's just for fun, I guess. I'm going to have to shuffle this deck first, though, because it is not shuffled. So I guess in the meantime, I will pause it, and I'll be right back. Oh, but paused. I can't tell if it paused. It didn't pause. I said the thing still are going up. All right, I figured out how to pause on my phone. My finger just wasn't working correctly, and I shuffled the deck. So let's draw a card or five. Three, four. This hand sucks. Ah, try to pause again. It doesn't work. My fingers are not big enough. Okay, I figured it out. I may or may not, may not have stacked my deck to give myself this great hand. But we're going to go with it. Alright, I would normal summon tour guide. Special summon. Where's that rhino warrior? One of the three. Where you at, dog? They're all at the top. Great. Special summon the Rhino Warrior. If they have a max C, cry and end your turn. Set your traps. Uh, but since we're playing against someone who has no cards in their hand... Overlay. Where's my Dante? There he is. It's first turn, so you put him in defense. Of course, and then... Detach. This is our graveyard. Uh, mill 3. Farfa, Graf, and Traveler, uh, Rhino Warrior, Chain Link 1, Chain Link 2, so Special Summon, Seer, it's zoomed in a lot, so you can't, I can't like, I don't have a lot of room to work with, uh, Graf Effect, and then Rhino Warrior, I'd put a Skarm in the graveyard, There's really a lot you could have done with this turn, especially with a Foolish Burial in your hand. I don't think I've gone for the optimal plays. But, uh, yeah. Let's go Foolish Burial. Why not? Let's just go all out. Actually, no. I want to hold on to this Seer so I can make it Beatrice. So let's hold on to that Foolish Burial. Uh, see, yeah, I feel like I misplayed because there's a lot that you could have done with this turn. Let's get our field... Into view, we got a Seer and a Dante. This is the hand. Not sure what I would go with. I'd probably just in turn make a Beatrice by overlaying onto Dante and discarding that Seer. And then Seer would get popped because he can't stay on field with a Beatrice because Beatrice isn't a Burning Abyss monster. And then Seer could use his effect, but there's really no point. Uh, and then in phase, Skarm, search out another tour guide. Yeah, I definitely misplayed. 
I've played this deck for years, but there's so many plays that you can do when you get a really good hand. And I forgot to set my back row too, because I'm not playing as an actual person. So yeah, that's a really strong first turn. We have a set Wing Blast and a Traveler, uh, a Beatrice on field, and a Foolish Burial and a Tour Guide in our hand. Like I said, I may or may not have stacked the deck to get a great hand like this, but I didn't even do an optimal play with it. I probably could have gone a lot farther than I did. I know this deck pretty well, but there's a lot of plays you can do. And like I said, especially given that hand I just had. So I hope this was fun for you. Because it was for me, I love playing this deck. If you have any questions about Burning Abyss, uh, you want me to look over a deck that you've built, you know, Burning Abyss. Like I said, I've played this deck since about, I don't know, 2014, 2015, back when Graf and Seer were at 3. I can't remember exactly when it was. It's been a long time. Uh, but yeah, I love Burning Abyss. I hope you enjoyed my deck profile. I certainly enjoyed making this. Cheers, let's hope I can stop it without having to press it five times. Oh no, here we go. Stop the video.